Hello, this is Pastor Scott, and welcome to the Daily Message. Today is Monday. Happy Monday, everyone. Yay! Everyone loves Monday, but it's, uh, Monday's actually Tuesday for me, so, um, Mondays aren't the worst for me. Um, they're not, they're not awful. You know, it's just Tuesday, so, um, and then Thursday for me is Friday because I'm off on Friday, so, uh, it's a fine Monday for me. I don't know about you. Uh, it's July 13th. Welcome to the Daily Message. As always, please subscribe to this channel and you can uh, sign up for the Daily Message links by clicking that little arrow down there in the video description and uh, donate, right? There's a link to donate and we appreciate all your contributions to help us continue to be God's people doing God's work. So thanks for those. You can, if you like this uh, and you want to do regular contributions, you can do that on that link as well. So um, please consider doing that. Sure do appreciate it. All right, let's look at some statistics. Global cases are at 13 million. It was 11 and a half million on Monday. So that's a lot. That, you know, that's what the chart looks like. If, uh, if you look at the global case load, right, it, it's still going like this. Not sure about the angle there, whether it be like this, but it's going up, right? It's going up. So it's just been going like that the whole time and it's still going that way. That's, that's just what's happening. Uh, US, we're at 3.4 million cases. We've got 3 million last Monday, so that's more than 50,000 cases per day, where we've been averaging about 57, I think, is what I, the math I did. Um, one point last week was at 70, but then it dropped a little bit, so um, going up, still going up. Um, but the hospitals are not overwhelmed, so that's what matters most, right? Here in Michigan, oh, it's, and by the way, it's still the second, for the case you didn't know, it's the second deadliest epidemic in U.S. history already. Uh, with uh, like 100, almost 140,000 people dead. Second worst in history. Uh, Michigan, we're at 69,338 confirmed cases. It was 66,000 confirmed on Monday. So, you know, that's, you know, that's what, that's 3,000 new cases over seven days. That's, you know, 400-ish a day. That's, that's okay. We're doing all right. Um, what's happening, I think, and what's interesting is that there are these hot spots popping up, which is how diseases work, right? So there was a hot spot in Torch Lake. A bunch of people got it there. There's a hot spot in Lansing. A bunch of people got it there. I heard there was a hot spot in Grand Rapids. A bunch of people got it there. That's kind of the way that this is going to go, I think. They're just going to be pop up and a hot spot here and a hot spot there. And that's where a lot of those cases come from. Um, Florida, by way of comparison, so we've got what, 400 cases per day, I think I said, um, Florida had 15,000 new cases in one day. Uh, but interestingly, okay, Florida's had all these cases. We've, got, we've had 70,000 cases. Florida has had over 200,000. But Florida's had less deaths than we have. Florida's still around 4,000 deaths, and we're at over 6,000. So, you know, um, it's very interesting, you know, how this is all kind of working out. And I, I you know, you see 15,000 and you go, well, that's... That's crazy. That's a, that's a really high number. It is. Um, but their hospitals aren't full. Um, and folks aren't, you know, dying in the hospital hallways, which is what we want to see. It's always been about keeping the caseload manageable for hospitals. And I've heard that in Houston, there are some, there are problems with that. Um, and there might be problems with that in some Florida hospitals. Um, but overall, you know, despite that high number of cases, they seem to be doing okay. Um, so that tells you the importance of good medical care. And folks there seem to be getting it. And as we know, a lot of the folks here in Michigan who died were folks in Detroit who did not get good medical care uh, necessarily. And so, you know, that's that's the difference, right? It's the hospitals and, and keeping it below that threshold. So other people might be, you know, really going nuts and freaking out about this Florida caseload thing. Well, people aren't dying in the ICU hallways, you know. Um, it's, 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 not, it's not horrendous. Now, if it keeps going, right, it gets up to 25,000 and whatever, then, oh my gosh, then, then they will be overwhelmed. Um, but treatment seems to be getting better, and so that's good. So, is it the apocalypse? Um, I don't know. Six Detroit Tigers have coronavirus six of the players uh, so that's a sign that it is the apocalypse clearly uh that six of the detroit tigers have it 
And also that a, a tropical storm hit New York City. Like, really? Like a tropical storm in New York City? Subways were flooded. People had sewage backing up in their in their cellars. It was it's gross, man. Um, yuck. So that is clearly a sign that it is the apocalypse. Uh, but it's a sign that it is not the apocalypse. The professional football team in Washington, D.C. is changing their name, which is fantastic and amazing and about time. And that, that kind of gives me hope, right? Because that was something that we were like, right, you can't change that. It's been that way for forever. Well, racism sucks, and that was a racist name. So we should change it. And they're going to. They're supposed to announce it today. So that is happy, and it really says to me, uh, all these Confederate statues coming down in various places, and now this happening, uh, says that we might have taken a significant bump towards uh, ending racism in this country uh, over these past few months. And that is clearly a sign that it is not the apocalypse. But, tropical storm hit New York, and six Detroit Tigers have the coronavirus. So, is it the apocalypse, or is it not? You're going to have to decide for yourself. Uh, what is happening at church? So uh, we uh, worship plan, uh, the in-person worship plan is out there. The survey has closed. Um, there were at least a hundred answers. Um, most of them came online, which is great. Um, fun story time. Um, story time with Pastor Scott. I uh, signed up for Survey Monkey. Did it through Survey Monkey and didn't realize that they only gave you forty answers when you signed up for a free account. So. Um, I looked and last week I reported we had 40 answers, but then I found out we actually had like 93 at the time because once you reach 40, then you have to pay for it. So all that data was sitting behind this paywall and I was like, well, we can, we're getting, we're going to get started here. It's right there, right? You can't just go with 40 answers when we've got over 90. So I signed up, tried to started to sign up for the basic business account and it was $3,000 and I was like, Okay, not doing that. So I signed up for like the 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 most basic business account you could get, right? It was, it was like the economy plan, thirteen hundred dollars, and I was like, no, not doing that. So then I found a plan as an individual plan, which might technically be sort of illegal. I'm not sure, um, and it was twenty nine dollars a month. And I was like, that's great. I'll pay thirty bucks for this thing. Well, it's uh, thirty dollars a month. But you have to pay for a year. So I'm looking at this thing, I'm going, it's $360 of offering money that can be used for wonderful things. Um, but I felt like we need to know. So uh, I bought it and I hate myself. And uh, Karen McKenzie is probably uh, gonna, you know, mm, mm, mm. sorry, Karen, I, I didn't want to. I don't feel good about it. Um, but now we've got SurveyMonkey. So if you want to send out a survey to anybody about anything, we've paid for it for a year, I am in. We have SurveyMonkey. Um, and Karen's just doing her job as treasurer, and, and I love Karen. Um, but yeah, so that was fun. Um, so I'm going to put the results all together, and uh, council meets next week. We'll talk about it at council. And I, I, my plan is to provide all, you know, like, all the answers for all of you to see in some way if you want to. Uh, but also to provide a summary for those of you who don't want to bother going through all those pages. Um, so that's what's happening there. Um, council meets Tuesday of next week. Uh, there's a Thursday Bible study. Council is talking about the congregational meeting and how to uh, go about that. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, how to have that. Because we at some point need to vote in new council members. Karen is an example of someone who has overstayed her um, her council uh, you know, the time she was voted in for to, because we didn't have anybody to replace her because we didn't have a congregational meeting. So, um, you know, Karen's done that. A couple others have done that. And I, I want to thank them for that. Um, I like giving Karen grief. I, I love you, Karen. Um, so, um, yeah, congregational meeting. Um, you can meet in groups of 10 at church. And you can also meet in people's backyards and, and you know, go out to dinner, sit outside and space yourselves. Um, but, we can do that. So don't let the lack of worship prevent you from being with your friends. Okay. Lots of ways to get together and be church that don't involve worship. Um, all right. So today's devotion is going to be from Micah 6. Uh, as you have probably heard, 
we have uh, a Micah 6 um, community in Pontiac, and we're connected to that, and we, we do some stuff with them. And uh, they're, they're named after this Micah 6 passage that I'm going to read for you now, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the end of it, which is one of my other favorite Bible verses. Uh, but it's not top tier, it's like a, like a second tier favorite. Um, so it's Micah 6, verse 6 through 8. Micah's in the Old Testament. If you want to go read your Bible, you can pause the video and, and go read your Bible. Um, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Good question. Shall I come before God with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Those were common. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? It's a lot of rams. Will the Lord be pleased with 10,000 rivers of olive oil? It's a lot of oil. Uh, shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Interesting. God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God? Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. So there you go, right? This is why we are talking about Black Lives Matter because um, of justice. What's why we're working to be an anti-racist church, not just a church that is not racist, but a church that is against racism. Um, and it's why we are, you know, doing so many of the things that we do, because God has, has God loves us, and God has blessed us, and in response, God asks us to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. And, you know, that, that middle one, uh, love kindness, uh, do justice, love kindness, yeah is amazing um kindness right i mean so often we get twisted in knots about what's right and what's wrong um maybe just be kind like if you don't know just be kind and you know maybe that person that you gave money to will go out and use it to buy booze and kill themselves faster um maybe but you will have been kind to them and uh that matters that matters so uh, there's our thought for today. Um, our prayer focus is going to be hospitals, right? We're going to keep praying for them, that they can um, they can keep caring for people and keep you know keep people alive, right? And this time we need them we need them badly. So um, let's get comfy here. Focus uh, on our breathing. Just breathe a little bit. In through the nose, out through the mouth. God, help us to do justice. Help us to be people who work for justice, who don't just sit there and say, well, that's the way that things should be, but who are doing it, who are acting it out, who are taking action to make this world fair for everyone. Help us to love kindness. And in those moments of indecision and doubt and not knowing, to choose to be kind to all others that we meet. And help us to walk humbly with you, God, to not become full of ourselves for what we've earned or done or accomplished or what is ours, but to recognize that it all comes from you and is all a gift from you, and all we can do is respond. Help us, Lord, to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. And we pray now for our hospitals, for the people that work in them, for the staff, uh, that they would uh, continue to have the tools they need to keep people safe. We pray that... Um, that they would be fully staffed and the staff would be healthy and strong and able to work and that they would have the resources that they need. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would keep this virus in check so that ICUs would not be overwhelmed. Um, and in places that are, we pray for relief. Um, we pray, Lord, for these hospitals, that they are the front lines and that you would keep them safe and allow them to do their work of helping people get well. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember to subscribe to this channel and to donate. Jesus is risen. The tomb is empty. Be smart. Stay safe. And I'll see you soon.